<笑>長いけど無駄だよ助けてー Welcome to Retro Core Season 2 Volume 5 and kicking off this month's show we've got Battlemobile for the Super Famicom. Now you gotta admit from watching this introduction you can see an uncanny resemblance to um, Road Blasted FX or Road Avenger depending on which name you like. You know the one that FMV game, the one that came with the Mega CD, also on the Sega Saturn and the PlayStation and of course the arcade original. Anyway, coming up on this month's show, we've got loads of good games. We've got Croc for the Sega Saturn, we've got Super Turrican for the Super Famicom. We've also got Thunder Force for the arcade. Plus a load more, and we're also going to take a look at a lovely brand new arcade which just opened. Oh, and let's not forget we've got another Chinese original or Taiwanese original, whatever it originates from. Mega Drive game. This one is actually a very good one. That's a lovely intro, you gotta admit. So, bent on revenge of his wife's death by the, um, oh, I don't know what you call them, so the Mad Max looking um, street gangs. Our hero soups up his car and takes to the streets. But unfortunately, he forgot to uh, equip any super weapons. But what he did equip was this lovely turbo. As you can see, the car sort of uh, bouncing around the screen there. And that is actually a turbo boost. And what happens is you uh, basically just ram the opponent off the screen. Now you may be thinking this is really easy. Well, it is actually. I finished on my first go. But um, the thing is, you actually have a fuel gauge down the bottom. See that little red uh, bar down by the Super Famicom logo? Well, that continuously uh, depletes as you're racing through the uh, courses. And if you don't pick up new fuel cells as you're driving along the road, you're going to run out of fuel and lose a life. Which can be a bit of a bummer, to be honest. Now, as well as having um, your special turbo ram attack, you also have a few uh, missiles. Unfortunately, these missiles only attack helicopters. So they're actually pretty pointless on the first level. There's no helicopters. There we go, we've got a few helicopters coming up here. Well, I wonder what we did have. Now, while Batmobile might be quite playable, it is too easy, as I mentioned. And the problem is, the, um, it does get quite repetitive after the while. So the first level looks really really nice and then the second level is uh well not much really. This level that you can see now does look quite nice but as soon as you hit the snow it goes into ugly mode. Oh there's a fog. I think it's snow. The thing is there isn't that much variety between the levels, there's no special effects or anything. Basically you get a straightforward scrolling shooter sort of No 
No, it's not the wrong tile screen of Thunder Force 3 for the Mega Drive. This is, in fact, Thunder Force AC, the arcade version of Thunder Force. And um, basically, what it is, it's uh, Thunder Force 3 uh, with a uh, level from Thunder Force 2 MD, the Mega Drive version, thrown in, and also uh, one original Thunder Force level, which actually features music that was uh, used on Thunder Force 4. Of course, this game was out years before Thunder Force 4 was. Now, graphically, as you can see, it looks uh, pretty similar to the uh, Mega Drive Thunder Force 3. But uh, if you do actually play them both side by side, this version does look a lot better. Well, looks a bit more clearer, put it that way. Sound wise, though, I think I do prefer the Mega Drive. Although they are pretty close. I didn't expect the place pretty much the same as the Mega Drive game, which was no slouch. Altogether, a pretty good shooter. Now here's the music that features on Thunder Force 4. What we actually have to do is uh, finish the game and you get all the uh, Omaki or the bonus uh, soundtracks up, and uh, it's amongst them. The version of Thunder Force 4 though is a hell of a lot better. And here we go with one of the uh, levels from Thunder Force 2. Actually, this uh, arcade version does look a hell of a lot better than the Mega Drive one. And you think come after the Mega Drive game, to be honest. So in the Mega Drive Thunder Force 3, this is actually uh, the final stage, well before you get to the boss that is. Oh, no surprise that's the final stage in the arcade version as well. Seems to be a lot more going on though. I remember in my younger days, um, well, maybe 15 years ago, I could finish this, uh, well I could finish Thunder Force 3 on the Mega Drive on the hardest level set on Mania. That would break in a sweat to be honest, but uh, seems to be struggling these days. Whether that's because the arcade version is more difficult, or I've just become crap at games. And yes, the last boss is identical as well. well how about the game's ending? Is that the same as the Mega Drive? Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to play the game to find that one out, because I'm not going to show you. Oh, people old enough to remember will know this is shite. This is Alien vs Predator for the Super Famicom. Coming to us from IGS. Now there are actually two versions of this game. There's the uh, Japanese version, which is the original, and the Western release. Now, um, both of them are shite, but the Japanese version is the worst. And you, I do like that um, invisible effect there, that's quite nice. Now the thing with this game is that it's just so bloody slow. Now the western version is faster but still doesn't help much. Now while the background graphics on the first level do look decent enough and give it a nice atmosphere, they don't seem to uh, continue through the game, they just seem to get shitter and shitter. Now one with one 
weird thing is that in this uh, Japanese version of the game, you punch things. In the Western version of the game, you have a bloody laser. It's fucking stupid. The controls are sluggish as hell. Collision detection is bloody awful. And the AI is so fucking dumb you wouldn't believe it. And it cheats. These little stupid bloody facehugger things there. Did he not but piss you off? Look at him. Knocking me down every five seconds. There you go. Oh, I must mention, right, that um, in the Western version of this, they've uh, changed the storyline around a little bit. And uh, changed the graphics around. And Predator himself does actually look different as well. He's got all new graphics. It looks even worse! It looks like they've tried to make him a bit more realistic. Anyway, here we go. Here's uh, the cutscenes. These come in between every single level. And, um, yeah. I'm not going to win any awards for the story. Put it that way. And on to stage two. And you can see the graphics have suddenly taken uh, a big leap downwards. Any better either. <laughs> now, Pinetta does actually have a special weapon at his disposal, and uh, to activate that, you've got to hold down the special button. And the problem is, is by the time it charges up, you end up uh, being smacked in the face by a bloody alien. It's not exactly practical. Now, why on earth is the Pinetta fighting aliens on a bloody cruise ship? Making this game, you, you, you ask, you're gonna ask yourself, what the hell were they thinking when they were planning the stages? Oh, and this stage is a, this is a classic. This one, they could, they were so bloody lazy, they couldn't be asked to make a boss. So instead of having a new boss, you just get a load of aliens, the same aliens that appear on every single level, all appear together, and that's your boss. Well, so my are coming on screen now. Complete shit! Avoid at all costs. No, Retrovision isn't some sort of new section for Retro Core. It's in fact a French language based retro gaming show produced by Robin. Now, Robin got in touch with me a couple of, uh, well, almost a year ago actually, uh, to talk about uh, putting this show into production. And being a fan of uh, retro games, he's actually done quite a good job. Now, unlike Retro Core, we usually feature uh, mostly Japanese uh, games on Japanese consoles. But Retrovision goes a little bit further and features uh, stuff on the Amiga and the Atari ST, and even the really old, ancient, crusty consoles such as the Collector Vision. So it's not exactly a competition piece to Retro Core, and does actually make quite a refreshing change. Salut à tous, au sommaire de ce dernier rétrovision de la première Now, this is the only bit of speech in the entire show. What Robin does instead of doing a voiceover, he subtitles his comments in. Of course in French. But no need to worry, because even if you don't understand French, it's still a very entertaining show. Up to volume 9 at the moment, you can get them all over at archive.org. Bienvenue sur le volume 9 de Rétrovision. Hey, it's time for those Chinese original games, or Taiwanese original games, for the Sega Mega Drive. Now this one, I can't even pronounce the name, because I don't speak Chinese, so I have no idea how it's pronounced, so I won't even bother trying to tell you. But what I can tell you, is that this is the best walk-along slash em up on any 16-bit system. That's not even an official game. Now I can tell you why this is one of the best official, uh, unofficial games ever made. And that's because it uses the Burnacle 2 or Streets of Age 2 engine. Now you might be thinking, no it bloody doesn't. 
and I think it does. And I'll tell you why. Because there's an awful lot of characters in this game that move identically to other uh, to uh, characters on uh, Street of H2. There's also an awful lot of uh, move references in there. And a lot of speech seems to be from Street of H2 as well. What Street of H2 does, doesn't have uh, these fantastic special magic effects. Just look at them. So could it be that uh, Never Ending Soft have actually ripped uh, parts of the uh, Street of H2 engine? It certainly looks that way to me. Who am I to complain? Because what they've given us is a fantastic walk along slash em up. Now each character's got the basic moves such as jump and uh, hit. But you've also got a two button combination attack, you've got a jump attack, and you've also got the magics. Now, the magics are actually limited. So what you gotta do is pick up icons through the stages. And you can collect up to uh, three or four icons. Now what happens is you press the A button use the D-pad to cycle through the icons and then select which one you want. Because each magic has uh, different power effects and each magic looks different and they're all as impressive as each other. Animation wise, your main characters are... Uh, well, to be brutally honest, are a bit on the dodgy side. What you expect from a Chinese made game? I can tell, uh, all the graphics seem to be original, the music seems to be original as well, I can't say I've uh, heard it anywhere before. So a big uh, thumbs up there to uh, Never Ending Soft, they've actually made a good effort. Now, usually these companies who make these uh, Chinese original games just rip music from their uh, other games, or they compose one or two of their own songs and then use them in every bloody game they make. But, uh, this all seems to be original. Now, I must say about the collision detection, now, many games that I've uh, played there uh, from uh, Taiwan and uh, China seem to have pretty dodgy collision detection, uh, Ruins 1 for instance, and uh, it's, uh, Hercules 2 as well, that's a bit dodgy, but this one seems to be pretty much spot on. When you hit someone, they fall down, just as you'd expect them to. And there's none of this, uh, Characters five miles away, yeah, you still get knocked down by him. Everything seems to be in its place. Yeah, lovely slow motion death. Another very important thing about games of this type is to have two players simultaneous. And this one does!
魔法使いザッハドルテ13世が目下のドルティーズたちを引き連れて島をも取りにやってきた。Hard to believe that's running on a Sega Saturn, isn't it? This is Croc from Argonaut. Now,、uh, they were actually going to make a sequel for this for the Dreamcast. Now, one thing I've got to ask is would they have sorted out the controls? Now, while Croc on the Sega Saturn looks absolutely fantastic, easily capable of、uh, taking on the PlayStation, in fact,、um, you could even say it looks better than some PlayStation 3D stuff because the polygons don't warp everywhere, everything's solid. Anyway, enough of that bullshit. See, the thing with Croc is, the controls are just bloody awful. Now, you know, I don't like to start off with on a bad point, but、um, when you've got a game that looks as good as this and is as interesting, well, you know, it's actually quite interesting this game. It really is a shame that they just couldn't be asked to fix the controls. Now, if you use the analog stick, the main problems you get are, right? Ready? If you can turn around the corner, and because the camera turns as well, the axis of the turn and point jams against the camera, and basically what happens is、um, Croc stops moving, he just gets stuck against nothing. Basically, when the camera is turning, your actual、uh, well, direction on the analogs moving as well, so it just gets jammed. Which can be fucking annoying, especially some of the bosses, because the bosses you gotta run around in circles all the time, and、uh, you end up getting just stuck on nothing. Another thing is trying to do a small rotation can be a right pain in the ass. You can see there when I'm trying to pick up、uh, the gems, I've got to sort of tap the controller. Now you can play the game in a、uh, digital mode, and、um, again, well, the controls are slightly better, but again, they're not really what I'd call good. It's far too fidgety. There we go. We got the boss here. Now watch this. I'm running round, running, 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 running. Hey, there you go. See, I stopped. Now that wasn't me stopping. The controls just got jammed, and then、uh, Croc stopped moving. Really, is a shame. But if you can live with the shitty controls, Croc is quite an is quite an entertaining game. It's definitely a technical showpiece.
さまよい続けると思っていた昨夜が目覚めた夜に開く花のように静かに大きくもうすぐ月はぐが祭りが始まる咲いた咲いてしまった誰もかも終わりだ私は確かめたいあの時何があったのかそして失った記憶の先に何があるのか<笑>ゼロ月はみの画面。フェデネツェンドウィー。アラスト。そんなにやしやパンス。Now, first, I must apologize that、um, some of the in game footage here is actually looking a bit distorted because、um, I did record it in widescreen. And when I、uh, changed the video、uh, display settings, I sort of made the,、uh, a bit of a mess of it, to be honest. So,、um, Every now and then、uh, the screen looks like it's splitting down the middle.、Uh, if you do notice it,、um, I apologize for that. Now, known as Fatal Frame 4 in the West, this horror survival game is definitely one that'll make you、uh, have a cold sweat. So, what I suggest you do is turn off the lights, put on your headphones. By the way, this is recorded in Pro Logic, Pro Logic 2, so if you've got a Pro Logic set up, switch it on. Make sure you're on your own and keep watching that screen. I'm gonna be quiet now. I'll let you shit your pants in private.
先I always love to rub in the face of Amiga fanboys. They always go on about how bloody good Torokin is. Not compare their version of Torokin 1, 2, or whatever to the Super Famicom, Super Nintendo version of Super Torokin. And there's just no comparison. Come to some Pop to Five with music from the Almighty Chris Holzbeck. Probably pronounce that right. This is the best Torokin out in the for the console. Pretty sure it is anyway. Oh, what a fantastic outing it is. Now while the Amiga is an almighty fine machine, there's no denying that it can't compete when it comes to uh, performance. Let's try to compare the grooves. Now the thing about Turrican is that it's just so easy to get in there, pick it up and play. You know, there's no fancy controls to learn. Basically you've got your fire, you've got a bomb, and you've got this laser thing here. Which sort of looks a bit weird on this video capture for some reason. And that's it. You can use the laser to freeze things, freeze them and shoot them. You can jump on top of items as well. It doesn't do much good though, usually you're killed. There's a variety of different weapons to choose from. Easily all understandable. Just check out the colour of the uh, the light when you pick up. Very simple. Extremely addictive. For the sound, need I say more? You can just listen to it all day long. You can double surround as well. Thankfully, Super Torokin isn't that easy. It does actually have quite a challenge in there, which is uh, what you want in the game. 
Set it up, Pete, finishing it on your first go, put it that way. Power up. In fact, everything you're seeing here is from the first, uh, first two levels, I think. So it just goes to show there's actually quite a variety as well. Absolutely wonderful game. Get it if you can. So it's July 25th, 8.30 in the morning, it's 32 degrees outside, but I'm nice and cool here in my nice Super Nimpleza. So we're driving along Route 199 in Kita Kyushu. On our way to this lovely new building which is recently opened called Corona World. Now in here we got a lovely brand new arcade called Metropolis. So um, let's pop in and see what it's like. Now before we actually get to the arcade, I thought you might like to be uh you might like to take a view of this uh, cyber toilet. Now I know all you all you people out there are interested in these Japanese air uh, toilets. Now here you've got a little button and it says actually says power the authorizer. So if you've got a button that really stinks, you sort it here. And below the toilet you got a little infrared sensor. What happens when you sit on this, it tells well when you sit down on the toilet, it tells the toilet that you're actually sitting down and uh, it'll heat up the seat for you. Over here we got another infrared sensor with a hand on it. This is actually the flush mechanism. Now I know Western toilets, especially in England, are fucking disgusting. You've got graffiti all over the place, shit all over the doors, God knows what else. So you never see one of these in here. This is actually a clean gel. I want to see if you spray it onto a bit of a toilet paper and wipe down your seat. Nice clean body. And you can see the place is immaculate. No piss pools. So here we go into the uh, arcade or game center as they call in Japan. Now I must uh, apologize for the audio quality in this feature because it's actually filmed, uh, this actually filmed with a Panasonic Lumix camera. Not a video camera but you know, a normal uh, digital picture camera. So it takes a uh, crack of videos but the sound quality is awful. And uh, yeah, there's a, there's a view of my shirt. Nice. As you can probably guess, you're not allowed to take videos in uh, this arcade. Hence the use of a uh, digital camera. So as in most uh, Japanese arcades or game centers, the top floor is mostly metal machines, as they call them, which is basically just coin slot machines. And pachinko. Now pachinko is basically a Japanese pinball, for those who don't know. You, uh, you shoot up uh, little steel ball bearings and they bounce around the pins and um, twiddle, twiddle little knobs and whatever and um, yeah, you win more balls. And a real pachinko parlor you can uh, send these balls off to uh, win money. Waste of bloody time if you ask me. Another thing the Japanese really love is horse racing games. Or horse racing in general to be honest. And uh, it comes to no surprise that Sega are in there making all these uh, horse racing simulations. So this one you got uh, your own little screen to bet on. You got a big screen in the center and you got these little horses that run around this little display. Nice. Here's one of the more modern Sega ones. This is um, one of the satellite series games. Each person has their own touch screen and on here you breed your horse. Now not only do you breed your horse but you can also uh, make it happy by stroking its nose. Tell you man watching some people stroke a screen is bloody perverted. Of course you get a card to save everything on so you can play your game in any uh, arcade that has this machine. Now most of these machines are made by Sega. There are one or two by Namco to be honest but uh, the majority of them are by Sega. And um, this is one of their weird uh, bashy ones. From what I can gather you got to bash the stuff on the screen which are little insects. How you do that I don't know because I've never played it. So let's take a little walk downstairs to where the main uh, video game section is. And not only do they have uh, video games or computer games, whatever you want to call them, but they've also got hundreds of UFO catches or claw machines as uh, they're called in English. I think. Can't remember now. 
Now this is actually the kitty corner here, and um, you got a Namco's a drum machine, a drum game, whatever it's bloody called. You can bash them all. Can't go wrong with them. And these things here, right? Basically, what you do is you buy uh, cards, you know, uh, character's cards, and you, you uh, swipe them through the machine, and shit happens on on the screen. You know, you swipe your bloody card through and battle someone else. Waste the bloody time, but the kids love them. Now, in Japanese UFO catches up claw machines. Um, you can get anything in these things. You can get from, like from little toys to uh, plush toys. You can even get Famicom clones. Now in this one here, you can get ice cream. Yeah. Thing is though, it's probably cheaper just to go to the shop and buy an ice cream than uh, waste your money trying to grab one from one of these machines. Yeah, this one here, we got um, some Mario items in there. Now this arcade does actually have a uh, quite a large selection of racing games. You got my favourite there, which is a uh, One Gun Dead Heat Midnight Run 3. And uh, next to it, you got uh, this one by Sega. This is a Sega Rally, t oh sorry, Sega Race TV. Now to me, this just looks like a gimmicky piece of shite. You know, it's basically what, what it looks like is it got the Outrun 2 engine and um, giving it the old uh, ooh, American Dream bollocks. It's just not appealing, it's just not appealing at all to be honest. As you can see it looks pretty nice but um Yeah. I think I'll stick with the other Sega Racing games to be honest. So uh, let's take a look around the corner. Oh, and what's that? Well, that big thing is actually a full hydraulic Outrun 2 SP. Let's take a closer look at that later on. Uh, here we got a Initial D Arcade Stage 4 with uh, high definition monitors. Pretty nice, but uh, I prefer number 3 to be honest. And next to that we've got Taito's Battle Gear 4 Tuned Edition. Quite nice, but a bit realistic, a bit too realistic to be any fun. And then next to that, we've got some shy with Mario in it. So, um, onto this uh, hydraulic outrun system here. Now, as you'll notice, they've got two steering wheels. Well, that, I don't know why, but uh, maybe it's to keep people happy who like to drive on the wrong side of the road. You know, some parts of Europe and uh, you guys in the States. Now, each machine uh, does actually have a camera on it, and the winning uh, driver has a little face up on the monitor at the top. As you can see, you probably just see me walking past there. Now next to that we've got a Bishi Bashi by Konami. Um, she bash the shit out of the buttons. And we've, uh, we've got a couple of uh, Konami music games. We've got Beat Mania, Guitar Mania, Drum Mania, and at the very end, Poppin' Music. And the best thing is that all these machines are connected to the net, so you can upload your scores or download or whatever from the Konami network. Here we got Afterburner Climax, hydraulic version. I, in fact, I think this is the only version that they made. Beautiful looking game, running on the Lemberg hardware. And surprisingly, um, the actual hydraulic uh, seat that you sit in is very good. Unfortunately, it won't move until uh, you connect the seatbelt. But, um,. It does actually feel quite nice, you know, you push forward, the seat tilts forward, you pull back, it tilts back sideways, so it all works as well. Unfortunately, it doesn't do a 360 uh, turn. Next to that, we've got Time Crisis 3. Not too sure why that's there. Pretty old. Let's see if we can uh, get some uh, shots of this Afterburner Climax in action. Yeah, very nice. As you can see, we've got uh, more uh, claw machines there. Those ones are mostly filled with plush toys. And uh, 
this machine here, this from uh, Konami, and uh, this is actually quite a nice action game. Basically, what you do is you hold uh, these two uh, punching glove looking weird things, basically just like Wii remotes, and then uh, you control the action on the screen with them. Now, uh, it does actually give you a demonstration on how the game works, so we'll come back that we'll come back to this later on when the demonstration's working. But for now, let's take a look at uh, this uh, Jeep looking thing. This is Let's Go Jungle. <laughs> Great title, eh? From Sega. Now, I'll shut up now because you'll be able to hear the sound from this one. Yeah, that's enough of that one. Let's go back to this Konami game. So yeah, as you can see, the demonstration's on now, so you can punch using the uh, glove things. You can block using them. You can even shoot with them. And quite nice, you can drive a car as well. And the car bit does actually control a bit on the shitty side, to be honest. But nevertheless, it's a very interesting game. Now, what I was going to do is uh, show you some Silent Hill Arcade and House of Dead 4 as well. But my camera ran out of uh, memory card space. So unfortunately, this is the last game we're going to get to see. It's from Namco. And, um, was it by Konami? I can't remember now. And uh, basically, what you do, you put your money in, you get a load of little balls come out, and you throw them at the screen. Can't see that going down too well in the West. People be throwing the bloody cans of coke at it. <laughs> 